students, I am Tulika Banerjee. Today, I bring you a learning module which is Ammunitions Part 2, in which we will discuss about nomenclature of cartridges, various parts of shotgun and rifled cartridges, along with the marks impressed on the cartridge due to markings present in the firearm. We will wind up this module with a case study. In the last module, that is Ammunitions Part 1, we discussed about modern day ammunitions and its development, various types of ammunitions and components of cartridge and its characteristics. Also, you studied about head stamp markings used on ammunitions. We will now be taking up ammunitions part 2. So, dear students, let us start with today's module. First is nomenclature of cartridge. A cartridge is a complete assembly of primer and propellant components contained within the cartridge case and the projectile. In case of a rifled firearm, bullets are used as the projectile, while in case of shotguns, lead pellets or shots are used. However, cartridges of various firearms have some or the other form of nomenclature that finally helps in the firearm identification process. The name given to any cartridge does not always directly lead to any cartridge or dimension of the firearm. Rather, it is a standard and accepted name given by SAAMI that is Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute and the European counterpart CIP. Correct representation of the cartridge names does not include a naked leading decimal point. Before moving on to nomenclature, let us understand about caliber. Caliber is a term associated with rifled firearms. The rifled barrel have canal like furrows called grooves. In between the two adjoining furrow, there is a raised portion which is called as land. Caliber is the actual measure of the bore diameter of the barrel between two opposite lands. The diameter is measured in decimals of an inch, example 0 0.303 inches rifle and 0 0.38 inches revolver. The grooves in the rifled barrel are cut in the form of a spiral in the inside of the bore. The spiral groove is obtained by gradually and uniformly turning the cutter while cutting the groove. This turning is called the twist. The number of grooves in a rifle varies from 2 to 22. It is incorrect to refer a cartridge with a specific caliber, for example, 3006 caliber. The correct complete name of the cartridge would be 0 0.30 inches 06 Springfield. This is huge amount of variation in cartridge nomenclature. Various characteristics of cartridges are reflected by its name. For example, a firearm 0 0.308 Winchester uses a bullet of 308 by 1000 inch diameter and was standardized by Winchester. On the contrary, sometimes the name of cartridge does not tell anything about the cartridge. For example, 0.218B uses a bullet of 224 by 100 inch diameter fired through a 0 0.22 inches bore. There is no relevance of 218 and B in this name. It is decided by those who standardize the cartridge. There are various other cartridges with similar nomenclature. In case there are two numbers in the name, then it is possible that the second number would depict variety of characteristics. 
most of the time bore diameter is reflected by first number whereas case length is reflected by the second number. The 7.62 cross 51 mm NATO refers to a bore diameter of 7.62 mm and has an overall case length of 51 millimeters. In old cartridges in which black powder was used, the second number usually represented the powder charge in grains. For example, the 0.50 to 90 sharps have a 0.50 inch bore and used a normal charge of 90 grains that is 5.83 grams of black powder. Various cartridges are named by a three number system. For example, 45 to 120 to 3 1 by 4 sharps, 45 caliber bore, 120 grains of black powder, 3 1 by 4 inch long case. Other times, a similar three number system indicated bore or caliber, charge or grains and bullet weight in grains. The 45 to 70 to 500 government is an example. Sometimes the name also denotes the name of a company or a person. For example, 0.3 not Newton. Next, let us discuss about parts of a shotgun cartridge. Shell or shot shell is the ammunition used for shotgun. Modern shotguns shoot shot shells. Shot shells with pellets or small shots is commonly used by bird hunters whereas shot shells with slugs or large pellets are used by deer or bear hunters. Centerfire primers are used in modern shot shells. These are also known as center fire ammunition. Shot shells are divided into five main parts. First is hull. The case of the shell is known as hull. Primer, wads, slugs and powder are present in the hull. For shotgun, cartridge case is made from several layers of paper which are tightly compressed. The base of this paper shell is made of brass. Plastic shells for shotgun are also being manufactured now. Next is primer. Primer is a substance which explodes when firing pin strikes it and ignites the powder. The sensitive high explosive which functions as an initiator is a pressure sensitive material which gives out a flame to ignite combustible material which works as a fuel. An oxygen supplier would supply necessary oxygen so that combustion of fuel is proper. A friction causing material is also mixed with to carry out the functioning of the entire exercise in a satisfactory manner. Next is propellant or powder charge. The expression propellant means an agent which fires the projectiles out from a firearm. The wad and shot is pushed downwards and out of the bore due to pressure created by the formation of gases. Formation of gases results when the powder burns. Next are wads. Protection of shot or barrel and sealing of gas behind the shot charge is the main function of wad. Next are shot. Shots are pellets which strike the target. Gauge is stamped on the bottom of every shot shell and the shot shell should be used according to the firearm. Now dear students, let us discuss regarding the parts of rifled cartridge. A bullet is a part of cartridge which comes out from the muzzle end of the barrel when firing takes place whereas in case of loading the firearm, complete cartridge along with the bullet goes 
into the chamber. The ammunition which is used in a handgun or rifle is called as a metallic cartridge. Mainly two types of cartridges are available these days that is rimfire and centerfire cartridges. Rimfire cartridges contain primer in its rim and were used since earlier times. These cartridges cannot be reloaded. Point .22 long rifle is an example of commonly used rimfire cartridge. But the most popular cartridge is centerfire cartridge. In this type of cartridge, primer is present in the center of the ammunition. These can be reloaded. All rifled cartridges are mainly divided into four parts. First is case. The cartridge case contains primer, powder and bullet. It is usually made up of brass for rifle, pistol and revolver ammunition. Those cartridge cases which are meant for high velocity weapons are long and bottlenecked. Next is primer. Primer is a substance which explodes when firing pin strikes it and ignites the powder. The sensitive high explosive which functions as an initiator is a pressure sensitive material which gives out a flame to ignite combustible material which works as a fuel. An oxygen supplier would supply necessary oxygen so that combustion of fuel is proper. A friction causing material is also mixed with to carry out the functioning of the entire exercise in a satisfactory manner. Next are propellant or powder. The expression propellant means an agent which fires the projectile out from a firearm. The bullet is pushed out of the bore due to pressure created by formation of gas. This formation of gas takes place when the powder burns. Next is bullet. It is a part of cartridge which is ejected out of the muzzle end and it strikes the target. Now we will be talking about types of marks on cartridge. A firearm which is manufactured in a factory will bear various markings put by the manufacturer for the purpose of identification like serial number, manufacturer's name, caliber, number of lands and grooves etc. These markings are called as class characteristics. These can be of helpful in identifying the owner. Besides the markings that I have already told you, there are several other marks which occur on different parts of the firearm not within the control of the manufacturer. These marks are called as accidental marks or individual characteristics which are very helpful in identification of firearm. Some of the important accidental marks I will be discussing here. The very first type of marking is the breech face marks. When a cartridge is fired, a pressure of the order of 2 to 20 tons per square inch is generated. Under such high pressure, the cartridge case moves backwards and is thrust against the breech face. The irregularities on the breech face may thus leave their impressions on the head of the cartridge case. These marks are known as breech face marks. The breech block of a weapon is usually surface finished by a milling tool or file, either of which leaves tiny striation marks on the face of the block. At the moment of firing, the base of the cartridge case strikes with the tremendous force on the breech block, registering impression on its surface. The marks may occur prominently on the primer cap, which is made of softer metal than the rest of the surface. The next type is the firing pin impression. When a cartridge is fired, the irregularities on the firing pin, which is made up of a material harder than that of the cartridge case, is imprinted on the percussion cap. These are called as firing pin marks. 
because of the firing pin strikes the primer cap with force there will be marks of firing pin on its surface these marks are due to imperfections finishing marks etc that is different for different firearms and are rarely never duplicated next are marks from extractor and ejectors when a fired cartridge case is extracted and ejected the irregularities on the extractor and ejector are imprinted on the rim of the cartridge case these are called as extractor and ejector marks all firearms have some form of extractor and ejector the extractor marks are not found on pistol cartridge cases the pistols have special ejectors which are likely to leave marks on the cartridge cases fired with it repeating and automatic firearms normally form definite and recognizable marks like size shape and location on the rim of the cartridge case sometimes their sliding marks offer more positive identification the next are the marks due to expansion at the time of firing that is when the trigger is pulled the firing pin gets released and hits the percussion cap this percussion cap contains primer which is a pressure sensitive material and on striking with the firing pin ignites this ignition subsequently results in the burning of propellant by which temperature and pressure is created within the cartridge case and the projectile propels out here the cartridge case expands and may take up marks or certain irregularities which may occur in the region where the barrel the breech block and the extractor meet now we will be discussing about bullet identification a rifled barrel consists of a number of raised and depressed portions the raised portions which are called lance and depressed portions which are called grooves are positioned alternatively the number of lands and grooves may vary from weapon to weapon and may have either left hand twist or right hand twist this twist is known as rifling the number direction and twist of lands are the same as the corresponding measure of grooves the width may or may not be the same the rifling gives gyratory motion to the projectile which continues even after the projectile has left muzzle end of the firearm bullets fired through rifled firearms receive both the class as well as accidental or individualistic characteristics of the barrel from which they are fired the bullet will show not only the primary markings left by the lands and grooves of the gun barrel but will also reveal the fine striation in all the marks these are the imprint of the small irregularities in the barrel and are never duplicated by different weapons to determine whether or not a particular gun has fired the question bullet a detailed comparison is made of marking on the question bullet with corresponding marking on the test bullets fired through the suspected gun a bullet comparison microscope is used for this determination the suspect bullet and the test fired bullet are illuminated obliquely in order to create shadows that reveal the ridges and furrows engraved by the gun when the bullets seized at the crime scene is greatly deformed or when only fragments of it are recovered comparative chemical analysis of the questioned and the known bullets by spectrographic analysis may yield useful information now dear students let us have a look at the conclusion of this module the nomenclature of cartridges is done according to the standard and accepted name given by SAAMI that is Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute and the european counterpart cip the number factor also depicts a variety of characteristics sometimes the name also denotes the name of a company or a person for example 0.30 newton 
Moreover, ammunition is defined as an assembly of all the components such as cartridge case, projectiles, propellant and primer. The cartridge of rifled firearm is different from a shotgun cartridge. The various parts of a shotgun cartridge comprise of hull, primer, propellant and shot or lead pellets. Whereas, a rifled firearm cartridge includes case, primer, propellant and bullet. We have also studied that the head stamp portion of the cartridge case contains certain markings produced by the manufacturer known as class characteristics and which can be also used for the purpose of identification of firearm. Individual markings on the cartridge case are produced when it passes through the barrel of the firearm on firing. Similarly, markings are being produced in the bullet when it passes through the barrel of the firearm.